With this video, I'm going to illustrate how value investing is the smart way to invest in common stocks. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. And the primary title of this video is why value investing is the smart way to invest in common stocks. But I want to make a point. It doesn't matter whether you're investing for growth. Value investing is a smart way to go. If you're investing for dividend growth, value investing is the way to go. If you're investing for high yield, value investing is the way to go. Regardless of what your investment objectives are, you should always be practicing value investing as the primary component of what you're doing. Now, there's some reasons for that, and I'll be covering those extensively throughout the video. Additionally, I'm going to utilize the FastGraphs Fundamentals Analyzer software tool to illustrate how effective value investing is and how it works so well for no matter what your investing strategy is. So let's go ahead and get into the video. In order to illustrate everything clearly as I possibly can, I'm going to go through the FastGraphs tool and I'm going to illustrate simultaneously to illustrating how important value investing is, how you can most effectively use the FastGraphs valuation reference lines, whether you're investing for growth, income, or you know whatever strategies I mentioned earlier. So we're going to start out by talking about the formulas that we use. If a company's growth rate is 5% or less, FastGraphs will utilize what's called what we call the Graham-Dodd formula, and that'll be designated by GDF. If we're investing for high growth companies, companies growing faster than 15% a year, we'll incorporate the formula that Peter Lynch made famous called PE ratio equal to growth rate, or PEG, P-E-G is how we'll list it on the graph. And then those are the two primary formulas that we use to draw the orange valuation reference lines, and I'll talk more about those here in a minute. And then the third formula is actually an extrapolation between the two where we've taken and just adjusted our algorithm a little bit for companies that grow between 5% and 15%. And that's the majority of companies, and that's normal. So in a lot of fast graphs, you are going to see a 15 PE ratio, which, by the way, represents a 6.67% earnings yield, which is clearly what my minimum threshold is. We're going to start with the low growth stocks. And I want to make another point as I'm talking about value investing. Value investing does not determine how much money you're going to make or how much what your rate of return is going to be. What valuation is, is it's a measurement of soundness. It means that you're investing on a sound basis when you incorporate value investing. But what it really means is that you're going to be able to fully participate in the operating results of the company. And let's talk about that a little bit. Everybody, you know, identifies companies that they want to own, whether it be Microsoft or Apple or Johnson & Johnson or, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi. It doesn't matter. Or, you know, a growth stock like Monster Beverage or Amazon or Google or meta, whether you're a growth stock investor or a dividend income investor, valuation matters and it matters a lot. So value investing works for all strategies. But the rate of return you should expect is going to be primarily a function of the growth rate that the company can achieve or has achieved going forward. I'm going to be talking about historical graphs here, primarily in this video. And uh, the next tutorial I'll do, I'll do on the forecasting graphs. But it's also going to be a function of the value you pay if you you know, pay a fair value P.E. ratio, you'll participate fully in the company in the long run. In theory, if you underpay, if you pay a P.E. ratio less than the earnings justified valuation reference line, you'll do better than the company. If you overpay, no matter how good the company is, you could still make money, especially for a high growth stock, but you're not going to fully participate in the business. So if you're going to go to all the trouble of identifying the businesses you want to invest in, why not make sure you invest in them? an evaluation that allows you to get the full measure of what the company is capable of delivering to their shareholder. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And let's start with the first formula, the low growth stocks, the Graham Dodd formula. And I'm going to utilize the utility stock Black Hills Power for you. Now, this is a company that grows at less than 5%, 2.54%. So what I want to point out is the growth rate of this line, starting from this point, ending at this point, averages 2.54%. Now watch what happens when I shorten the time frame. It now increases to 5.14%. So if I go back to the 2.54, we're applying the Graham-Dodd formula, and we connotate it GDF, and we apply a P.E. ratio of 13.58. So in this case, the theoretical earnings justified valuation reference 
would be a PE of 13.58, or we'll call it, you know, between 13 and 14. Remember, valuation is never precise. It's always a range. Now, the market has a different idea with this company. They have valued it at around 17 times earnings. Okay, and that would be the P.E. ratio of the blue line. But here's the point I want you to get. When you're looking at the orange line on the graph, you need to understand the multiple that the line is being drawn at, which is 13.58 in this example. You need to be cognizant of the rate of change of earnings growth that the line represents over the time frame being drawn. That's the 2.54 percent. And then you also need to be cognizant of the third line, which is the market, how the market's been valuing the stock which is the blue line. But the orange line and the blue line are valuation reference lines. Okay, let's move on and let's look at a stock like ConAgra. Okay, ConAgra is a 2.7% grower. Applying the Gram-Dodd formula again, we get a PE justified valuation of 13.9. So the orange line is going to be a PE of 13.9. Ironically, the market basically agrees. And although those numbers aren't technically identical, they're sort of identical. 13.5 to 14 is what this is implying that is a fair value for ConAgra. So if you can buy it at a P.E. ratio below either of those numbers, you can do better than the 2.7% growth. Now watch when I cut some time off of this. Okay, now I'm up to 3.8% growth, all right, and the P.E. has now been calculated using the same Gram-Dodd formula at a 15 multiple. Once it gets over 3%, you're going to get a 15 multiple. And if you understand the formula, you can Google it, and I might show it later. But the point is, I want you to note how earnings track. So now we know the multiple of the line, in this case now, is 15. The blue line is 13.2. And the growth, the growth from this point to this point represents 3.82%. All right, now what I want you to understand about that, if I bought the stock here at a 14.25 PE, that's you know pretty close to the fair value line. And I held it all the way out here, you know, which I'm going to try to hit it. There's a 15.2 PE, which is just a little above my original line. I have a 3.82% growth rate. Now, that includes all these other dots, so that's going to be close but not perfect. But I end up with an annual rate of return without dividends, a growth component of 4.18%, basically in line with the slope of this line. Now, I also got $5,900 in dividends. That's the white line on the graph. That's the dividend payout ratio. And then we take that area below the white line, which is what's paid out, and stack it on top to illustrate that in addition to growth, 4.18% in this example, where I've measured it, you also got $5,959 in dividends. So your total return was 6%. But your return was created by the slope of the line, the valuation you bought to buy it, and then the price going from fair value to fair value. Now, just a couple of quick little iterations of this. If I bought it when it was trading here to 6.5 PE, okay, on December 5th, 2008, you know, half the fair value reference, if you will, all right, and held it to the fair valuation that I did earlier, at least roughly there, there it is, I would have made 11%. So I've turned a 3.8% grower into an 11.5% rate of return. I got 9.5% growth because what I got was I got the 3.8 or 3.5 to 4% growth that this company generated at that time. Plus, I got the dividend income that the company was paying at that time. Plus, and this is a very important plus, I also got, you know, it started out with a dividend yield somewhere around 3 to 4%. That's where this line is here. But then I also got PE expansion. The PE went from 65 to 15. Now, I call that natural, you know, leverage. So, But the point is, my rate of return came from the function of buying it at a fair value, seeing that stock move back into fair value, and follow its earnings growth over time, plus paying a dividend. Okay, looking at another one, Campbell Soup, you know, if I'm looking at the max graph, you know, this stock is a stock that has grown at a relatively slow rate of 3.6%. The multiple of my line is 15. The slope of my line is 3.63. If I bought the stock at a 15.7 PE here, which is just a little bit above the multiple that the orange line is drawn at, and I hold it 
to, you know, I'll try to get as close as I can to a 15.7 PE. That's close enough. I'm getting 5.49%. I got 3.4% growth. That's annual rate of return without dividends. That's consistent with the 3.63% general slope of this line. Plus, I got $9,486 in dividends. That, that gave me a 5.49%. But I bought the stock generally at value, just maybe a tad overvalued. And I measured it. And this is why I always say measuring performance without simultaneous a measuring valuation is a job half done. This is what I mean. I've got to be studying value to value. For example, if I buy the stock when it was mostly undervalued or the most undervalued it was on this graph, which is a 12 PE, and held it till it got up to a you know 23 PE, almost doubled the PE, I can make 16% holding this company with virtually no growth. All right, that's why valuation matters. But by paying attention to valuation, I'm getting the full measure. Now, with stocks like Campbell Soup and Edison International and ConAgra that I showed you, these are low growth stocks. You know, if I look at these stocks, the 15 PE here, we got 14.9, okay, which is close to my 15. That's what the orange line is. We got a slope of 3.2%. And again, if I buy it, you know, at approximately a 15 PE and hold it to approximately 15 PE out here, I make 4.68%. I get 2.36% growth plus dividend. The growth of the business and the slope of the orange line, if you buy it at value, is going to determine your return. If you buy it under value, you're going to get more return. And if you overpay for a stock, you're going to get a lot lower return. Here you actually lost money because you paid a 19 multiple for a company that's only growing at 3% a year. And then you ended up getting PE contraction going from 19 to 13 and you ended up losing about 20% of your money. You did get about 20% dividend, so you ended up breaking even. You eked out a 0.21% annual rate of return, but I'd call that dead money for five or six years. All right, now let's expand on this a little bit further. Let's go into the PE equals growth rate. Okay, I'm going to start with Fiserv. This will be the lowest grower in the group here. All right, and I like Fiserv as an example because it pays no dividend. All right, so I'm going to take the normal PE off the graph and the price for a moment. And I want you to see a quintessential example of a line that grows at 15.68%. Now, since that's higher than 15, I'm using the formula P equals growth rate. So the slope of the line is 15.68. The multiple of the line is 15.68, okay? So now when I put the price on the graph, the weekly closing prices, I want you to see how closely those prices followed that line more or less, you know, up through 2013 where it started to separate, okay? And then it separated, you know, all the way up into COVID. And then we had a flash crash during COVID. It rallied again. But I want you to notice from its peak, where it was trading at a 30 multiple with a 15% growth rate, as the stock moved back into fair value or right, you know, real close to it, you ended up losing money on a stock that gave you 29% growth, 11, 26, 16, and 15. You obviously did not participate in the full measure of the company. Now, had you bought it here at a 15-ish PE, you know, 15.74 almost exactly on the 15.68 and held it to here. Now, all of a sudden, your rate of return is 17.39%, which is, you know, very consistent with the 15.68% slope of that line. Now, keep in mind, the slope of that line is measured from here to here. The line from here to here will be slightly different, but it'll be close to that double-digit number, all right? So, you know, it's very important that you understand when you're looking at the orange line on a fast graph, you understand the slope of the line, how fast it's or slow it's growing. You also understand the multiple of the line. And then you should also, the third thing, you should know what formula has been utilized to draw that line. Okay, so that's a moderately fast growing company. Let's move on here to global payments. Now, global payments has averaged 17.45% growth. So now that's the slope of this orange line. Global payments always paid a little tiny dividend, but it really started to increase its payout ratio in the 2020-2019 in the era. Okay, and you can see the dividend starting to show up here where it barely shows up back here when they were paying four cents a share. But again, the slope of the line is 17.45%. The multiple of the line is 17.45 times earnings. The normal PE is a little higher on this company, and I'll show you why here in a moment. But the point is, when I put weekly closing stock prices, once again, we see the strong correlation 
then, you know, we start seeing a deviation where we start getting high P.E. ratios here into the 20s. And once again, it peaked out up here at a 30 plus multiple, 33 times earnings, you know, coming into COVID. And then, of course, it ended up reverting to the mean. But I, interestingly enough, even though it's continuing to grow at double digit rates, a little slower than its historical average, we saw the stock fall all the way down to a P.E. ratio of 11. And this is consistent with a lot of payment processors that went through this. And there are reasons for that. But we're not what we're talking about here is valuation and how the tool gives you a valuation reference line. So when I look at a company like Global Payments without price, I'm recognizing that if I can buy the stock on this line, I'm going to participate fully in what the company delivers. If I buy it below the line, I'm going to get everything the company delivers plus a bonus of what I call natural leverage, a PE expansion. I'm going to get growth, dividend, and P expansion. And if I overpay for the stock, I'm not going to fully participate. So when I put price on the graph, you can see that when even back here before it peak valued, even if I'd have held it to here, my rate of return would only have been four and a half percent, even though the company had put together some really spectacular years, although one week here during COVID. And if I bought it up here, anywhere up here, and I'm not trying to hit the very top here, you know, I'd have been losing money on this stock, even though the company grew because I violated the rules of valuation. I overpaid for a great business here. This is clearly a great business, you know, with moderate debt, investment grade credit rating, and a very consistent rate of growth. And since they started increasing their dividend, they've had a nice little dividend record as well. All right, but valuation matters, that matter a lot. So here we're using slope of the line is 17.45. The multiple of the line is 17.45. Okay, so that becomes our fair value reference for a fast growing company. I move on to a monster long term. Now this is an interesting graph. And what you see here. We, we cap growth over 30% at a 30 multiple. So the orange line on this graph represents a 30 PE over this time frame. And you can see how the stock price has tracked that more or less. When it's below that line, it's a PE lower than 30. When it's above that line, it's a PE much higher than 30. But I'm going to now take off. I'm going to try to make this graph look a little more consistent. So I'm going to scroll back here and get rid of that dip. I'm going to go back to just about COVID here. All right, now I want to make sure you understand this. I'm using the P equals growth rate formula. I capped it at a 30 multiple because that's what we do. But now I've got a 39% growth rate. All right, and what I'm looking at is if I buy the stock at a 30 multiple, it's close enough right there, and hold it to a 30 multiple up here, that's pretty close. I'm going to participate fully in the growth of the business or as fully as I can. Now, remember, the growth is measured from here to here, because what I want you to also see with a company like Monster, if I cut some time off of this graph, the growth rate actually accelerated. Now I'm using, you know, now I'm looking at a growth rate of 41. And again, I can you know, buy it at a low PE and hold it out here to where it's trading there. And I'm getting 22 percent a year because what happens is in the later years, I started to see my growth slow down. So now I'm using the P.E. of 19, which makes sense for this period of time. And, you know, if I move it forward, now that the growth rate has dropped down to 14 percent. I want you to understand that this is an analytical tool. And what you do when you change these time frames is you change the growth metrics of the company. And therefore, that changes the valuation of the stock. And stocks valuations can change over time, okay, as you're going through this. All right, now the last ones I'm going to look at are actually the most common. This is where you're going to see the majority of fast graphs. So very slow growers are relatively rare. The very, very fast growers, like I just showed you, are relatively rare. But the companies that grow at normal rates of growth, okay, are more common. So I'm going to look at one a little cyclical here. I'm going to do it in alphabetical order. I'm going to get rid of this crazy year here, okay? I'm going to try to make it more common. Now, what I've got, I've got 11% grower. So it's double-digit growth. But that the formula, the gram dot, 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 PG, says that's a 15 fair value. The market says a 14 fair value, 13.95. All right, and what you've got here is a stock price that pretty much tracks that. And you can see periods of high valuation, periods of fair valuation, and periods of low valuation. But again, by paying attention to this line and buying the stock when it's in alignment with that line is going to give you a rate of return that's going to be significantly correlated to the growth rate of the business. 
Now, you've got 11% growth, 11.14% growth, which is almost identical to 11.25. But then again, you got dividend income of $10,998. That shot you up to 12.41%. Growth component was 11. That allowed you to fully participate in the growth of the business. The income component is what they paid out in dividends here, these different payout ratios, the white line on the graph. And then the green shaded area is this white line simply laid on top of the earnings. And because it's laid on top of the earnings, it gets a little, you know, it looks up and down. But here you can see that it's been a very consistent dividend performer all the way. Moving on, if I look at Cisco, here I've got an 8% grower. This starts to get to be a very average company. And note that the PE ranges here, even the normal PE and the, you know, fair value PE are roughly at 15. 14.78 and 15. And you can see times when you know, if you bought the stock, you know, right at a 15 P.E. ratio, that's close and held it you know, to pretty close to a 15 P.E. ratio. You get 9 percent, you get 7.45 percent growth, which is equivalent to the 7.94 with a slight P.E. ratio adjustment. The P.E. shrunk from 15.16 to 14.5. But then you got the dividend income of sixty three hundred dollars and ended up making 9 percent. But it's the growth of the business and the growth in the income that it produces, plus the P.E. ratio expansion or contraction that's going to you know, give you your, your total rate of return. What fair value did is just allow you to participate in the growth of the business. So valuation matters, as I often say, and it matters a lot. Now, moving on here, we'd look at Next Era Energy. I recently did a video. Again, you got the slope of the line is 9%. So, you know, if I take the price off and the normal PE off, this line is accelerating at, at about a 9% rate. That's going from this point to this point. You can see the difference. Some years are slower. Some years are equal to 9. Some years are higher. All right, but it averages 9.07% over this time frame. I knock a year off of that. Now I'm at 8.62%, but I still have the 15 PE. The multiple of the line is 15. The slope is 8.62. I shorten it again at a different time frame. Now I've got 8.98% growth. I still have my 15 PE. Slope of the line is 8.98. Multiple of the line is a PE of 15. You know, if I put the stock price on the graph, all right, I can buy it here at a slight discount to its fair value PE of 15. They've got a slight premium, 17 there. So I ended up making 11.36%, which is my 8.98% plus the PE going from 13 and a half to 17 plus $8,000 of income. I ended up with 13.8%. All right. As you change the graph, these numbers change, but they still produce a consistent valuation reference when you're looking at and evaluating these companies. Now I'm going to finish up with OMC. I put this one in here because I was asked to cover it. I want you to notice the market likes to put a premium valuation on this stock at times. So there's a range here of about a 15 to 16 PE. Again, if you buy it when it's you know in alignment, now let me shorten that to a 14 year. We got a 6.8%. If I buy it, you know, at a reasonable PE here of around 15, and you know, hold it to where it's still trading at 15 ish, you know, end up making 10% a year. I got 8.22% growth, and that's again consistent with the growth achievement the company generated during that time frame plus dividend income. The stock is now undervalued, okay? But if I'd have bought it when it was undervalued here at a PE of 13, I would have still made a profit, a growth rate of 4.57, which is now I got PE ratio expansion. But again, I'm positioned to fully participate. When this stock moves back into alignment with the orange line, I'll be able to get the full measure of what the company generated by buying it and plus a little bit more by buying it at a discounted valuation. So there you have it. There's why value investing is such a smart way to invest. But I want to talk a little bit about a couple other things here. So I'm going to bring in some you know work I put together. Ben Graham was considered the father of value investing. All right. And Ben Graham, you know, talked often in his book, Security Analysis, which was published in 1934. He suggested that a P of 16 is as high as prices can be paid. That's basically 15 times earnings, as I've shown throughout this video. Now, he also pointed something out. And I want you to understand, these are valuation references. They're not meant to be precise. They're meant to be within a range. So 14 to 16 might be you know, a number that 15 represents. But the common stock investor will also properly accord a more liberal valuation 
to those which have current earnings above the average. Now, the point of that is that if that's where you use the P equals growth rate, a lot of the stocks are going to be a 15 PE, but not all of them. And he also, you know, popularized the Graham number where he normalized the PE by a factor of 22.5 to represent the ideal PE ratio of no more than 15. Here's where he talks about a 15 PE and a price to book of one and a half. Okay, and there's the formula for the Graham number. But we also have the general P-E ratio um, comments that, that Ben Graham made at other times when he was talking about, you know, fair value. Now, what's important about the fair value ratio of P-E equals 15 is something I wrote about in, all the way back in 2019, where I talked about why a 15 P-E ratio is fair values for most companies. First of all, it represents an earnings yield of 6.67%. It also, you know, represents the fact that the average rate of return that stocks have generated has been about 6 to 8%, okay? And so, you know, when the current earnings yield is between that, it's a prudent investment. But I also pointed out that fair valuation is a measurement of soundness and prudence. It doesn't guarantee you a high rate of return. What's going to give you your rate of return is the growth rate of the company and the achievements of the operating results of the company, okay? And I go into that. I'm going to put a link to this article at the bottom of this video so you can learn more about the concept of, you know, why we're using these different formulas and why a 15 PE ratio is fair value for most, not all, but most companies. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the fundamentals analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're subscribers to FastGrass, I hope you've got a little better insight in how to utilize the tool, how to recognize that you've got to know the slope of the line plus the multiple the line's drawn at plus the formula that the line is drawn with. And when you do that, you can start making instantaneous judgments about whether a stock is an attractive buy, sell, or hold candidate, no matter what your philosophy is. If you're a growth investor, the Fast Graph tool will help you. If you're a dividend growth investor, the Fast Graph tool will help you. We just looked at the historical graphs here today. I'll be doing further future videos like this, looking at some of the other you know, components that Fast Graphs offers that can really help you be a better investor. If you aren't a subscriber, take a look at it. We give offer a free trial. It can really help you be a better long-term investor. If you like the video, ring the bell, give me a like. That's all I've got for today, and I look forward to talking to you guys again real soon. Thanks for watching.